first time in two weeks. I can still... Now there's echo. Hold please, how are we doing? <clears throat> That's a little better. First time in two weeks that I haven't sounded like I was dying and man, that was a rough couple weeks. I've been tying a fly about yay, yay big. Eh, you can measure in trout like this, but actually like this. I'm calling it the loaf of bread, the loaf. Cause it looks, you know, it's it's got a big profile. I tied it initially in sand. So you know, it's like presents itself as a big loaf of bread. Something yummy for the trout to eat. That's not how it got its name. I'm just gonna get ripping. It's craft fur. The the idea behind this check one. We good? Yeah, thank you. The idea behind this, or I don't know how I got on this train of thought, is one to to use different material. I like to use all sorts of materials. Craft fur was a material that I was not comfortable with, with which I was not comfortable. And I got comfortable because I didn't like being uncomfortable. And, you know, you, you read things, you see things. I like the look of it. It was just something that so I'm just doing a little... Reverse tie with most of it on top. As I'm tying this, and, and a lot of flies that I tie, I'm going to, tangent one, we're off to a good start. I am going to encourage keeling during motion, which another way of saying that is I'm going to keep more surface area on top than on bottom. It's also going to reduce when you're using synthetics and specifically synthetics that get longer than your hook gap. It's gonna reduce any bunching up on the bend, which if you have a fly that should be, by all rights, measure, or, um, swimming hook point down or whatever, it's starting to spin a little bit, you could have material bunching up on that hook bend, which creates a little rudder on the bottom. So crafter and sand, some whiting. American that I have died and I've, I take some mainstays in my life, the the all white, the grizzly, and the black lace, and I'll just you know I'll go through and if I find a color that I like, and I know that. You know, this segment, this length of feather 
is good for swim bugs or good for whatever, I'll go through and, and dye you know, a handful of colors. Or, like I do in many cases, decide that this specific marigold, tanny, sandish color is the greatest color for flies that has ever been so everything. Lucky my daughter or cat haven't gotten any of their hair dyed. Peach was one. <laughs> a lot of a lot of peach stuff pretty quickly. And it's always while I'm production tying it not not a good time to just be dying stuff. It only takes a couple minutes. Well, yeah, and then an hour and a half later. The rabbit holes go deep. Two on each side. So stuff on top, right? The other thing is, there's so many. There's not two things. One of the other things Opacity, which, trigger warning, I'm going to use the word opacity more than once. Hooking the vise, this is how my brain works, is the A-Rex universal curved size 8. 6 is fine. You want to use a gammy, maybe go up to size 4 or 2, I guess if you're going small. This is a pretty transferable pattern um, you just you upsize and downsize the clumps of synthetic and trim your chenille so opacity something that is black creates a bigger profile in lower light situations I disagree with that statement uh, somewhat significantly I get that it absorbs light, but something that is opaque absorbs light. The opacity of something absorbs light. Color, mm, if something cannot, does not allow light to pass through it, that that's going to create the biggest profile to a predator that is under it trying to come up and take the insides out. So I, I skipped the, the first chunk on the shank. Oh, check this out. Getting in front of that DSLR, doing that thing on me. So I skipped the back portion of this and that's just to avoid the, the clumpiness which would be if I put more material here and it got one around the hook bend, more around the hook bend, and two in this thick part to where you're going from a nice taper to, and to get length off the tail with meaningful taper and also have it not foul up, you just you have to be careful with what with what the rest of your fly looks like. Otherwise, you could have um, you know you could go too much on this craft fur, and then you would just have this kind of fat. I don't know if it's playing my slice, but whatever. I've it's a good way to get around flies that don't look or swim the way I want them to, and I've tied them poorly enough to just say. I'm doing this. Chunk of craft fur. Hmm. Five eighths of a number two pencil. Roughly. And I take out the long chunks. I'm going to use those, but that's a collection of many five eighths of pencils.
So this is the sand. Take out those long ones. That white, there's more on the bottom, but I'm going to encourage that white to be, you know, two thirds or three quarters with that tan, that sand just being the, the top accent. And if you just use a lot of tension, I would say that I'm pulling almost to the breaking strength of GSP. But since I'm using GSP that will bite into itself and the vendetta continues and just become unusable very quickly, my tension is roughly just under, what are we going to call that, the spool destruction tensile I have at least stopped re-spooling all of these, which I feel didn't use super glue or wax, so we're gonna put another couple in there. And then craft fur and UV flex. I've said it before. I'll say it again. It is a relationship. But all marriages, friendships, father-daughter, mother-son, you, you want a relationship like the one that Craftfur and UV Flex have. Takes a little work. Becomes really flexible, easy, doesn't blow up on you, just works. And like all good relationships, you can just, if you're not happy with it, make it into whatever else you want. So I'm just kind of holding, <laughs> jokes aside, just kind of holding that bottom in place a little more than I was the top. And that way the, the top becomes a little taller. Throughout this, I'm also encouraging the high and tight, kind of. But especially as I'm getting towards the front, because I want this thing to relax. I want this thing to side to side. And it'll have a big enough profile with the opaque craft fur. Hook in the front is a TP610. It's a good gap. It's a stout wire. It's not, it's not too much in terms of wire diameter for me to be concerned about penetrating a trout mouth. And what it adds in castability I'm taking that over You know, a lighter wire hook. So this is the Partridge CS86. This is the 2-aught, maybe it's the 3-aught. 
and it is it's just it's a lot of metal I, I struggle on this one because man that's pointy <laughs> and if your line is at all straight and if you point your rod wherever you are and your line gets straight I have a hard time believing that's not going in a face. Anyways, TP6110. TP610. I, I, apparently I'm not, my brain's not all the way back, but I'm not sure if it ever was. Option to put a rattle in here and use some articulation wire. Beetle on. Seven strand. That's not true. I'm actually using a musky leader that is too short. So I just tuck these to the side. I actually found found where I tuck them. And this is 40 pound. It's really flexible. It's just better than the 19 strand 018 or 024. 018 just feels eh. I don't really like tying with 018 and then the 024 I think is hard to get or cannot you cannot get it in the 100 foot or it's something crazy expensive so here we are but regardless, stainless steel, nylon coated, knottable. I'm going to put three beads and I'm going to use different colors. And for continued fun, this one's going on the side. And then as I tie, I'm going to orient it on the back of the hook shank. Like so. Couple underneath, just to get that thing centered. And there is a point to this type of articulation or articulating in this order, I should say. So once I get this all threaded through, instead of coming off the side and it just does the side work yeah are you gonna catch fish yeah will it break no does it foul eh yeah does this mm, less and it just it doesn't take that much time when i'm doing the dumbbell eyes for whatever reason i guess i've just done so many that i'm doing you know, beads on, wire after I put the eyes on and then get the wires around. It really does keep the eyes. They move if you don't do that. But with no eyes, I tend to do this type of tie-in. And then to get that, if you're having, you know, you're coming up here and then you're trying to catch this uh, and you're just... Let that go, take two or three wraps back, then catch it, and then you don't really need to worry about that little loop because you can kind of fold that down. And there's a bunch of stuff going on this. And we want to make our lives easier. You also don't need to double it back. Put some super glue on here. Metal, nylon metal, little super glue on GSP. 
That thing is not moving. Crystal Hair from Fly Tires Dungeon. I did an entire game changer out of this. So we're just going to do... I've, I've done this with uh, bait fish sculpting fibers. This stuff you can get really dense. And it, it pushes water when you have it dense. It's pretty flowy and works really well with Craffer when it's not super dense. This this is going to be kind of in the middle. I have wax. There's enough there. On the inside of my C-clamp down there. I'll put some more since it's almost out. The high tack swax on a piece of Velcro up on a post drilled into my tying table. Because if it touches anything, it's game over. It is sticky. So not perfectly even, a little bit of taper. I do want it longer, just slightly, than the articulation gap. I just, I, I'm giving that a couple spins so that everything's taut as I make sure that it is somewhat evenly distributed. Clip the super long ones. This is just going to be a ramp for some craft fur that I'm going to tie in on the connection cover so it doesn't just collapse and do, do nothing, which is fine if if you use a lot of craft fur and make a big reverse tie. Another part of this is a fly that is easy to cast without weight. So I want it neutrally buoyant and neutrally or negatively because it's synthetics and metal. But by doing the Craffer reverse ties, with, with a lot of those shorter butts, it soaks up a lot of water and it holds it, you know, even when it sheds water, it holds it. So it's, it's heavy, enters the water when you recast and deliver. If you use too much, it becomes a sock, but that's, that's why we use our ramp materials and also some strong fuzzy on the front of this which just gives it the air resistance so if you think about casting like a peanut envy or a clouser it's going to collapse your leader there is no loop formed if, if you have something heavy but you put air resistance on it not too much but enough so that there's a balance put a little air resistance on it and if, if you balance that with the weight of the fly and the momentum that it has, then you have something that casts really nicely. Just 
Just got rid of those. I might have to get rid of more. And then I'm going to put not very much white. And when I do this, I'm not being super. So for as much as the thought that I put in this, right, you know, I, I do this. I'm like, yeah, that's fine because it is. Make sure these are all good. And then before I tie in here, this metal doesn't compress. Everything else here does. So what I'm going to do is just And then on this tie-in, kind of split that. And then doing your best to not take your cuticles off with that hook point. Just encouraging that to be Kind of off to the sides. Just enough to remind me it's there. It's so kind. Neil, mostly for flash, kind of taking up space, but I'm pre pretty quickly going to be tying in I, I kind of I was thinking about you know do I want the a dense brush loop of sculpting flash or crystal hair behind the floppier, less dense, less pushy, polar chenille. And I, I the tiebreaker came in, I want that crystal hair or sculpting flash up front, right behind the craft fur, in large part because I can sculpt it to make more of a high and tight as opposed to the conical. I could do that and then put UV around, but it's then it's not right behind the crafter. But again, this, this is all... Once it's in the water and... It's a good, pretty good chunk of crafter you're putting on here that'll form to whatever is behind it. I was cutting a quarter, so these are basically eighths. Mm, keep that those long ones. A little pre-taper. I'm gonna trim it anyways, but. get me. You might. So 
starting to have a good amount of stuff and getting close to the eye. So not that I avoid using this for any reason, but I do remember to use it when I get to this position because it's you can palmer and kind of hold this off at the same time. But when you get up close to the eye, things tend to get a little messy. And this is just to keep, if you ever feel like I can't quite get this dubbing loop and this materials bunching up, rotate your vise. And if you clip that down against the hook shank and rotate your vise towards you. And then if you're still getting jammed up, just Move all you all of your materials back. And the more you do this type of thing, the more comfortable it gets and a couple things. It, it becomes easier to fix, you know, errant clumps. You you can you just the, the feel you have for the material. becomes better as you start being a little more off script with it. I think one of the biggest benefits to starting to do that is that you realize as long as your materials and densities and you know, it, it's just it's time at the vice, but as long as all all that stuff is where it should be, which is a very subjective measurement. As long as it's all where it should be, it's going to be okay. And then, of course, if it sucks, you get to retie it. And likely, if it sucks and you have a brain and you feel like using it, you can think, ah, why does this suck so bad? And then that is really where you learn about tying flies as opposed to does it catch fish or does it look cool in a picture that it just doesn't matter when you when you're fishing a bunch or you're fishing for a long day and you're just you're looking at a fly being like oh boy this thing is gonna get smoked that is a good fly i think that's that's the measurement i got goosebumps thinking of this dude I had him fishing this in a couple places where almost exclusively I'm going smaller and jiggier. Uh, shout out to the <laughs> change the battery back. God, that that's I'm, I can't come back from that one. Shout out to the swim versus jig. video and yeah, we'll just finish this like finish it like this and then take some close-ups and I just have a reverse tie taking the long ones out of a clump of pretty long stuff and this is gonna be like a 50 50 reverse Some of it's going past the bend. I'm okay with that. Big chunk on top. And that's just, I'm taking some long ones and moving them back to not go full 50-50, but encourage a little more 50-50. So taking length off of what's going to be wrapped over. 
You get what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm pinching, I'm coming down hard. And then I will also put in two whips there. Most on most of these synthetic flies, I'll trim I mean, especially for the first dozen or so within a design or a, you know, the swim bug using a, a new hook or sizing up for striper or musky. I'm, I'm trimming. I'll, I have a razor blade that I'll, if I have a couple new hair bugs that I'm swimming, I'm, I'm bringing a few on the boat. So with these synthetics, a little easier because you can go back in here and you know this stuff dries out faster. So you can pretty easily just go in here and make some adjustments and figure out what what the next fly should or or could look like. And I'm going to put a little more. Just some longer ones of tan. I want some more stuff in there. Which is nice. Because it's also going to give me a balanced point to tie in a little accent. I'm right up against the hook eye here, so I'm just going to lift that up and cinch it down. It's going to give me a balance point to tie in four rattles. Now just a little, just a little beat. Some chartreuse on the. Trim the long pieces there. You can also, as you're tying this, sort of a cool look to give this an extra, some added depth which is happening somewhat accidentally is rip stacking ice wing with your craft fur and it, it doesn't need to be perfect again it's kind of a theme here you could also uv uv flex this gives it a um, little bit of a different action in the water a smooth surface Pretty, pretty lengthy on the side. This is going to be super, super loafy. I tied the first one I tied. Oof, it was good. And then the next two or three were, I was like, man, what? More crapper is kind of the, the lesson. I'm going to put in two or three tight wraps of not very densely looped strung fuzzy. And the reason... Where'd he go? I'm not going this dense. I don't really want that many fibers. 
And so doing two or three wraps tightly versus, you know, one wrap of dense, again, it, it's kind of not really playing the slice, but I'm, I'm assuming that my dubbing loop is not going to be perfectly uniform. I'm going to try, probably not that hard. And so if I don't make it super dense, the margin of error becomes a little less. And when I wrap three, four times and, and then make sure those are real close together and then trim the bottom and the sides a little bit, you, you end up with a more uniform head than just trying to do a, a super dense wire brush and also doing the the loop with GSP versus tying onto the or tying a that's for musky flies with a thick wire brush and making really dense heads on a big hook where it doesn't make a, a big difference. When you're tying that much wire onto a hook you're adding weight and then you're also just adding bulk to where I'm not really leaving much room here. The takeaway from this is watch Gunner's video on Strung Fuzz and tie some flies, tie some shows. And when you get this stuff dense, it doesn't move. It does not move in the water. If something is something is in the water and you're moving it and it doesn't move, that means it's moving water. I'm not going to get into that right now. Doing my best. Do my best to not finish, Ellis. Subtangent B part A. When you're not going super dense on the strong fuzz, you can afford to be sort of sloppy with your loop. When you do, when you're going dense and longer fibers, you have to be you have to be methodical about it and pick apart the little snags and just it wants to wrap around on itself. Forty five, man. I should just sit here and talk for another fifteen minutes. Also super tightly wound GSP. Lock all that in with some bone dry. You can also, if you don't have bone dry and, and you don't want to get resin up into the material that you're tying with, if you're tying with synthetics, Crafter is a big one. You got to be careful with it, but you just take your super glue. And like, just do a little unifocus. I'm going to find a way to do this. Before you whip, you know, it might, it might get on your whip finisher. You can't really notice it, but it'll, if there's any super glue on that when you're using GSP and you, you get a couple whips in there, it is going to be locked in. I could probably just brush this and sort of pet it a little bit. 
for the next, just to make this over an hour. This part is largely unnecessary if you're going to be taking this out and fishing it and bringing scissors. Because after a bunch of, especially if you get it hung up in a tree or a rock and you really put it through some shit, all of these fibers are going to be straightened out and you can see where things are going to stay and everything else will be. Be where it wants to be, which is kind of the, the picking it out process. So, a little bit more of a ramp. A little less material. And then leaving enough, so on the just bottom three quarters really going all the way around and, and take basically taking off like one one wraps worth if I wanted to be real fancy I could just razor those short pieces but I don't feel like being real fancy right now Contrast? Contrast anyone? Eleven minutes. I'll do this for eleven minutes. Experiment with new materials. Don't worry that your chartreuse is not perfectly centered in density on the bottom of the fly. Even though that probably means this fly should be thrown away. Have fun.